Hi, welcome to Quirky Queen's Journals. My name's Kirsten. So today we are doing more abstract art on the gel plate and we're starting with a very strong focal point. So this is Mars Black, heavy body, acrylic paint. I'm using a silicon wedge colour shaper and I'm just making quite a strong, thick line that has curves in it and what I'm doing is it is to look like it's almost like two curving lines intersecting each other and I'm trying to have it that although the width is the same the color is the same the you know the blackness is exactly the same that sounds daft I want the edges to change as I move about and um, also the thickness of the paint, the texture of the paint, the solidness of the line. So basically I want it to be very strong looking, very um, the focal point but actually this has got lots of variety within itself. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense to me. So although it's going to look distressed, it's not consistent everywhere, that it's still going to be very, very strong. So it will act as if it's just two solid lines, but actually there's a lot of um, variety in mark making within the lines. That's the idea anyway. So this is a full process video. I've kept everything in, um, you know, when I'm working on the gel plate. I've cut out drying time. There's times when the tools that I'm using will leave the gel plate and they, you know, when I'm picking up paint, water, changing, whatever. So um, what I've done as well is, these sort of very watery black areas that I've put down, I'm just trying to add a little hint of the black in other areas of the gel plate. Now, when I spin the video around, that's to kind of signify drying time. And I've went back in and you can see here the edges are quite solid in some areas and that's good. We want that. But what I'm trying to do is break it down um, so that some edges are less solid. Also for the mark making purposes, when the paint's very wet, when it's damp and when it's dry, doing the same thing to the paint will have different effects um, because of the state that the paint itself is in. So this is Alizarian Crimson, Titanium White and just a tiny dot of Mars Black. And that Mars Black has given it almost a grey quality and it's just, I think it, I always call it mature colours, I don't know if that's correct or not. <laughs> but to me, you know, it's still pink. But just adding that little spot of black in has really elevated it. So this is actually the end of a tooth, a toothbrush, a paintbrush that I'm using. And I'm just rolling it about. Now it's quite a thin paintbrush. So the marks I'm getting, they're quite solid. I've kept this pressure and everything the same. So these marks are quite consistently solid throughout the gel plate. What I'm doing is I'm taking the edges of these solid pink marks and I'm trying to graduate them out by using the dry brush head. What happens as well when you do this is the paintbrush will get damper. So what I've done is when I'm using this, um, you know, the dry paintbrush to try and graduate out the colours, so that it gives it a blended look, as I always start at the bottom of the gel plate, so that it's as if it's rising. So as the paintbrush gets damper, it, it 
there's more graduation because you've got different um, witnesses of the paint being moved. I hope that makes sense. It makes sense to me when I'm doing it. <laughs> so you can see um, using, you know, lots of different types of mark making, using the paints in different states, using different tools, so you can have the same movement, doing the same process, but just having things at different drying states, different tools applying different pressures these can all these all add together and although you're make, doing the same mark making process they give you different marks so here i've took the alizarin crimson at just straight out the tube and i'm making very solid lines i do come back later on and break these down um you know it's hard to you kind of finish a layer and you think, oh, it's, ha it's hard to move on to another layer. And sometimes I find just doing a small kind of structured line can help. Um, it just helps you think a bit more. And when you're doing it on the gel plate, you know, it's easily amended. Unless you put five layers on top that are brilliant, then it's a bit harder to get back to. <laughs> so this is yellow green. And what I've done is I've added a tiny dot of black to it. And again, it's just gave it a slightly more olive colour, which I like. So this is a wet paintbrush. Damp, wet. And I'm just rolling it about with the paint. Um, to me, it is looking fairly like the Alizarian crimson, white and black mixture I put down. However, this paint is transparent. I've added Mars Black to it. There's no titanium white. So with the Alizarian crimson, it's a very opaque layer. And this isn't. So even though the movements are the same... You know, the size of the paintbrush head. And also I used the back of the paintbrush to put the pink down. So even though the movement is kind of the same, the tool was different, the transparency of the paint was different. So this is a dry paintbrush now and I'm just doing the same as before. I'm patting it down to try and graduate it out. This also helps give subtle differences. So although this yellow layer is very thin already and very transparent the patting it down gives even more transparent areas and then some areas stay a bit more solid it gives different textures in it the fact that the the paintbrush was wet that I put it on with and now this paintbrush is dry these all add variety to that green layer which is adding variety to the whole picture so now this is just the green yellow streak from the tube and I'm using a colour shaper and I'm creating a more structured line again. This is um, mimicking the one of the black solid lines that we did at the start. So at the ends I'm just trying to blend it out a wee bit with my fingers at the ends. So I really like doing these abstract pictures on the gel plate. I mean, it's the same sort of process that you would do on paper, but I like the fact that, you know, it's easier to make changes to, if you've went in a direction, you've thought, mm, not so keen on that. It's slightly easier to, to sort of backtrack a little bit. And also you have to think differently because you've got to think of what what we're seeing just now is not what the top of the picture would be. And um, the top of the picture is the very first layer we put on. So there's the surprise element of when it's done. Although I do look under the gel plate quite a lot just to be sure. Um, 
I do want some control over what's happening, but there is also the there are there's certain aspects like when I'm putting so that's a solid green line just now, but actually on if you look at the other side of the gel plate, parts of it are masked by the other paints that are down. It also um like underneath the black the if the green's very solid and the black's quite light, then you will see some of the green shining through. So I'm using the paper here just to further thin out the green paint and give different textures to it and to remove some of the more solid areas. So this is me breaking up the Alizarian red kind of more structured lines that I had made before. I was going to do the circle and I changed my mind. <laughs> So this yellow green paint has it's still slightly damp so it does move a little bit. I do like how we put it down and then we went over it, we patted it down with the paintbrush. But we're still able to come back and do more to it. Whereas if that was on the paper and it dried, yeah, we could sort of sand into it and peel it a bit. Um but the gel plate does give more options on um, ways to manipulate the paint and, you know, make marks with it. So I'm putting down this solid line just now. Composition is an area that I would really love to know more about, especially when we're doing... So that the black curved lines are... It's like two lines snaking through each other. And then all the other paints I'm, I've been putting down are kind of um, supporting it. I feel like there's a busyness to it. But at the same time, there isn't a sort of strong focal point in one area. It's more of a solid picture overall. And it's all about these two lines snaking around each other. So it's conveying that there's a sort of relationship between them. So I thought, right, if I add in this solid line, it will, it will help ground it. It'll give that third and two thirds aspect to it. And I feel I use this as a bit of a fallback um, because the painting's quite busy. It's quite loose. There's no anything containing it, if you like. And I feel like putting this line down one third helps do that. And I'm not sure if that's true or not. It's just how I feel about it. Um, but again, it's not some... I do it because I don't know what else to do. That's what I'm trying to say. So I need to work on that and think of other ways to try and contain the picture without using a solid vertical line. So anyway, I was using the colour shaper, blending it out, and then I used the towel to blend to dry up some of the wetness at the side. This is charcoal, willow charcoal on a book page. And what I'm doing is I'm just drawing loose lines um, that I'm then going to transfer onto the gel plate. So a lot of what I'm doing with the gel plate is I really like experimenting with it about trying to find new ways to use it to create better art, basically. So um, when I transfer this as well, the charcoal doesn't smudge. It stays put until it's lifted off. Um, with the layer of paint at the end. So I do do this quite, you know, on most of the gel plate. And then once I've got some big areas covered, then I look at it more intently to work out what areas kind of need some more of the lines to help balance it. I like the softness of these lines. Even though the lines themselves, they've got hard edges, but there's a softness to them that when they were put on the paper, they didn't have. 
So this is just my box of oil pastels and soft pastels. Um, this is a light olive green oil pastel. Um, I quite like using the oil pastels and soft pastels on the gel plate. Some of them work better than others. Um, some brands work better, but also some colours work better. And I don't know whether it's to do with the pigments. So this is light olive green, and that does go on quite well. And this is a white soft pastel, like a chalk pastel. This is Sennelier, so it behaves very well. You know, it, it's got a lot of pigment, and you don't have to work too hard for, you know, to leave marks from it. The thing is, on the gel plate, it's much harder to blend them. Which is good because it behaves in a different way than it would on the paper, obviously. Um, do you know what? I could have put this on paper and then transferred it as well. That's a thought. I'll probably do that next time now I've thought about it. So what I do end up doing though is I, I end up putting some water on the edge of it just to help blend it. Um, soft pastels do react with water. Um quite nicely sometimes and then other times you're like I don't want you reacting <laughs> so there we go you can see my water my paintbrush had a bit of the yellow green paint left on it but that's fine it is interesting because I like the way that it's sitting on top of that solid pink paint and there will be flashes of it that come through at the end so I was thinking a bit more strategically when I was putting this down and I'm using it to sort of line the curve of the, you know, the black line, the black curved lines that are snaking through each other. At this stage, we are reaching, you know, the end, the big areas are done and it's really now we're on to adding the details and trying to basically make a good picture that's worth looking at that tells a story as well and it's balanced so I'm just using the towel to um, use the water that I'd put down to help graduate the soft pastel now this is yellow high flow acrylic paint yellow azo maybe and um, it's like acrylic ink and I'm putting it down it's quite thick that I'm putting down thicker than I intended to be honest um, but I just wanted to use the bottle cap to sort of draw it on um, because that's something different again now this is very transparent and when I spread it out it will dry like a film you know a very thin film of the yellow which I like. So for me, this painting kind of is about, well, it's about the relationship between the two black um, lines. And I feel like the lines are somewhat mimicking each other, but they do have differences. And then the pink, the strong pink vertical line is like boundaries. And I think as well the colours, it's quite a happy coloured palette. Um, and there's nothing too harsh about anything in the painting. Um, and overall, I, I think it, for me, I think it conveys a sort of quite a nice, respectful relationship. That That's for me, that's what I think. Um, I have been quite, lately I have been quite, into thinking about, you know, the stories that a painting is kind of telling me. I have done a painting with symbolism recently and that's there's not any symbolism here and it's not something I'm overly interested in, but at the same time, I think there's small aspects of it that, um, that are very interesting. So that was it drying there and the pink vertical line has, you know, 
it's too solid so i'm breaking into it with the silicon wedge color shaper basically just scraping it back um obviously the silicon wedge is soft you know you wouldn't want to use anything with a sharp edge and it does make a difference doing this um because while that vertical line is still um strong and it still conveys the message that it should that it's like a boundary it's certainly less aggressive looking and all the you know the kind of supporting marks that have been made with the different colors i think as well are you know they're kind of the the things that are going on in the relationship and there's ebb and there's flow there's compromise um, there's some excitement, there's some drama. So that's kind of what I was trying to convey with this picture. Now, I might be completely wrong. I might be off at a massive tangent. <laughs> but in my mind, it makes sense. So this is Windsor Violet. And I just think that it complements that bright yellow perfectly. And... Um, this is really just the final details going on and I really do think that this helped bring it together. The, obviously, this is not what the picture is going to look like at the end because this is it, it's the other side of the gel plate that will be seen. Now, the pale pink from the second layer, I think, that I put down... I'm breaking that up a bit because it's still very solid and so paints that are on top of it are not being seen at the top of the picture. Now this is titanium white that I am putting down to pull the print with. It, um, I'm putting down quite a thick layer. I'm putting it down gently because some of that easel yellow high flow acrylic paint is still wet in the areas where it's very thick so I will do them at the very end <laughs> I do like seeing the white against the you know what's on the gel plate it almost makes it look more interesting <laughs> more interesting So with the thicker layer as well, it will take slightly longer. I've, I've got a bit more time before the white paint dries. <laughs> I'm going to pull it with 300 GSM watercolour paper. My preference is the Canson 200 GSM mixed media paper. I find I get the best pulls with that. But I don't have any of it just now, so... We're using the 300 GSM watercolour paper. It's just, it's not cheap watercolour paper. Watercolour paper is not cheap. But it's certainly not high-end watercolour paper. But it's thick and it's able to handle a lot of layers or repeated pulls from the gel plate. So you can see there on the bottom left hand side that yellow is just showing through slightly but we've managed to contain it so that's what matters. So I leave this on for about 20 to 30 minutes and I took it off, um, off camera, well I was going to take it off on camera but it stuck slightly in the middle so... I took it off myself. But anyway, I hope you like it. I'm, I really like it. I think it's a very happy painting. And I hope you enjoyed. And I hope to see you soon. Take care. Bye.